Okay, we're gonna jump into the touchscreen on the car, which pretty much controls majority of the car. And the way to understand it, what all the buttons and interfaces do, and how to control them. So let's start with the left-hand side of the screen. The left-hand side of the screen is where you'll find your car. When you're in park, you'll get options to open the trunk, the frunk, the charging port, and when you drive, this will actually change into a third-person view of the car where you'll have visibility to the lanes next to you, the cars next to you, and you'll be able to see your car moving down the road. On the top left-hand side, you'll find your car name. We'll cover that later, how to name your car, but that is always visible there. At the top, you'll find out what gear you're in, as well as your battery indicator. Now, one thing I wanna highlight is this line that's underneath your battery. Right now, it just appears to be a regular line, but you will see this change. When you're driving, you will see an indicator starting in the middle of the line and moving to the right when you're accelerating and using more of your battery and moving to the left and changing colors into green when you are using regenerative braking and putting charge back into your battery. Usually you'll see regenerative braking applied when your foot is let off the gas and you'll see battery usage and the line moving to the right when you're using more gas. The less gas you use, the more you'll come into the middle and achieve better mileage. Now along the bottom here, you're gonna see a button for rear view camera, charging, and voice command. Now remember, voice command was something that is initiated from the right scroll wheel by pressing down, but you could access it via this main card. Now below your car avatar, these are called cards. You will notice that they will change and you can swipe them. Below these three, you'll find your windshield wipers. You'll see that I have it on off. You can actually turn them on and set them to auto or change the speed of the windshield wipers. Now down here on the bottom, I indicated that these are cards. If you swipe this to the left, you'll find your mileage card. Now your mileage card will show you your mileage. The first mileage indicator is from when you started the trip you are currently on. If you scroll down, it will tell you your mileage indicator since your last charge. And then you have two customizable trips. These trips, if you select the three dots, you can rename them if you wanted to track a certain trip or reset them. What I recommend is leaving one of them for the lifetime of your car. At the bottom, you'll find your odometer. I currently have about 5,500 miles, but on that 5,500 miles, I can look at my kilowatts per hour usage as well as your watts per mile usage. And that's why I recommend not resetting one of your trips. So my trip A is what I will actively change depending on my trip and depending on how I wanna track, and my trip B is overall usage. Otherwise, I usually keep it right up at the top so I can look at actively how my watts per mile usage is as I'm driving for that specific drive. Now, if we slide the card back and slide the card to your right, when your car is on, you will actively be able to see the PSIs of all four tires on this card. And those are the three cards that are at the bottom left side of your screen. Now, because I clicked on the charge indicator, you will see the charge menu come up. So let's go ahead and talk about that. You can open up your charging port here, as well as from your app, as well as touching the charging door, but also you can open the charge port from up here as well. The main point of this is to set your charging limit. So you'll see here, I've indicated where my charging limit is. You can click on set limit here and you can see what's recommended for daily and what's recommended for trip. Now, if you don't already know, the daily recommended charging is anywhere between 80 to 90%, but when you're going to take a long road trip, it is recommended to charge to 100%. So right now you'll see I have set mine to 90%, so on a daily charge, I'm charging to 90%. Now at the bottom, you'll see your charge current. This is automatic. Depending on what you plug in, this will automatically pick the right current for the charger that you are using. Now, if you wanted to enable scheduled charging, you can do so right here. For example, if you have a lower electricity rate at night after 11 p.m., you could say schedule charging for 11 p.m. So even if you plug in at 5 p.m., it will only start at 11 p.m. 
On the far right, you'll see supercharging, and that will indicate the last supercharge that you use, where you used it, the date, the time, and how much it costed you. And that's the charging menu. One thing I wanna call out is as you bring up menus, you'll notice that they overlay over the screen. And that's because the maps is your default view. You will always have maps running. As you notice with the charging port, it just came up above. If I scroll this down, you'll see maps is always live in the background. So let's talk about maps. The maps is powered by Google with a Tesla overlay. If you want to navigate, you click on navigate here, you will get an option to type in whatever you want to type in, as well as touching home or work will automatically bring you into programming those. Some simple shortcuts. If you scroll right on the navigation, it will automatically navigate you to where you need to be. So because I'm at home, it's navigating me to work. Now on the far right, you will notice that there is a compass as well as a zoom in and out which work like so, as well as you can enable satellite mode, which takes a little bit to render, but if you wanna see things in satellite mode, that's always nice, and that's what it looks like, as well as you'll notice traffic, being able to turn it on or off. Let me turn off satellite mode so it'll make it easier to see. This is traffic on, and you'll see clearly there is a lot of traffic up over in Palo Alto area. Turning it off takes it off, but I would always recommend turning it on. Now you'll see when you zoom out of the map, you'll notice that there are a lot of red indicators. Those are all the Tesla supercharging network. And as you can see, there's a lot. So I encourage you to travel. But what you'll notice is that there is a, a button underneath traffic. And so let's zoom in over here into the Sacramento region. You'll see there are four superchargers. Looks like one of them is coming up that's kind of shaded there. When you click on a supercharger, it will indicate how many chargers there are, how many are being used by red indicators. It'll indicate whether there's bathrooms and food in the nearby vicinity, what the charging rate is, what the idle fee is, the address to that location, how many miles it is from where you are, you can favorite that location, how many miles from where it is that you are. So along with having these supercharger options, if you press the button on the bottom right here, you'll see a list of chargers come up. Now these are all listed as superchargers, but if you scroll down, you'll see a thing called destination. And those are indicating the destination chargers that you'll now see coming up in gray. The destination chargers are usually at hotels and these are chargers that don't cost you anything. If you click on a destination charger, it will tell you how many there are there, but these are chargers that are sponsored by that venue. So for example, the destination chargers in downtown Sacramento, if I click on one, you can see the Hyatt Regency Sacramento has five chargers five destination chargers, those are five chargers that are being paid for by Hyatt offered to its guests. And those are always nice to have and know that destination chargers don't cost you anything whereas superchargers do have a cost associated to them. And that's pretty much maps. If you touch the screen, you'll notice the right hand options go away to give you more visibility to the maps. Touch it again and they come back. It does work like any smartphone pinch to zoom, and you can see that the screen is very responsive. And that pretty much covers everything there is to know about maps. Let's talk about the top of the screen. At the top, you'll notice a little lock right here. This lock represents, as easy as it is, locking and unlocking the car. You'll notice when the car is locked, your options to open and close the frunk and trunk go away because they are locked. Unlocking them brings back those menus. You'll notice the clock at the top, the weather outside, as well as this Tesla logo here. Now when clicking the Tesla logo, you'll notice some details about your car come up. You'll also notice this interesting thing. We'll go into that in just a second, but if you scroll up and you click on the top right hand side of your car right up here, that is how you can name your car. My car's name is McFly and that's a throwback to Back to the Future. Now you'll see some information about your car here, Model 3, long range. You'll see your mileage usage here, as well as your VIN, what software you're on, and two of the most important things about this menu 
are one, the owner's manual. If you ever need to refer to the owner's manual because you want to get more in detail than this video, click here and it will open up a digital guide to the owner's manual. On the flip side, if you are ever in trouble, you've got a flat tire, you ran out of juice or so forth and need to reach Tesla's roadside assistance, you can do so by touching right at the bottom right hand side of this menu. Now, going back to what you saw when you first pulled up this menu, if you swipe down on this menu, you will come across what is the hidden menu of Easter eggs. These are some fun things to try out. Uh, they're all fun, they're all goofy, they're all gag-like, um, but just to kind of cover what they do, more cowbell is an interesting feature. Let's go ahead and try it. It enables what's called Rainbow Road. It'll tell you how to enable it. Push the drive stock down four times quickly. When auto steer is engaged, the road turns into a giant rainbow road and it's accompanied by the more cowbell song with a throwback to Saturday Night Live for those of you that know about more cowbell. Let's go back. The second option is a paint tool. If you click that, it will bring up a paint menu where you can change colors, draw, and do all kinds of fun, fancy stuff and publish it. Who knows where it goes? Uh, but you've got all those kind of options there so you can have fun while you're bored in the car. Go ahead and hit exit there. We'll go back into the menu. The next is a Santa mode. Santa mode turns your car into a, into a sleigh accompanied with left turn, right turn, jingle markers, and a, and a Christmas song. Then the next one is Mars mode. It basically turns the map into a visual map of Mars and your car no longer looks like a car, but a satellite. And the last is Atari. That is exactly what it sounds like. It is an Atari emulator with a couple of Atari games that you can play in your car. That is the fun Easter egg menu. Next along the top, you're going to notice is your driver profile. This is where you can create your driver profile. And I have one for myself as well as my wife. And in there will adjust your steering wheel as well as your seat, as well as how you like to drive, whether you choose chill mode or, or how you like your regenerative braking all get saved to the driver profile. Next is dash cam. The dash cam is enabled by plugging a USB drive into the USB ports behind the center console. You will need to take that USB drive, plug it into your computer, make sure it's formatted into FAT32. There needs to be a folder called Tesla Cam, and thus will enable dash cam. As you can see here, it's indicated that it's always recording, and when you touch it, it saves the last 10 minutes. Next to that is the home link button. This is what, how you configure your garage door. Going into there, we'll walk you through the process on configuring your garage door and using the remote to configure the remote of the car. Next to that is your Wi-Fi. This is how you set it up for your Wi-Fi at your house or office. I highly recommend connecting to Wi-Fi because that will help accelerate the delivery of software updates to your vehicle. And last along the top is the Bluetooth menu. This is how you'll program your phone for Bluetooth settings to access your, to make phone calls as well as play music into the car. Follow the settings here to program the Bluetooth of your phone. Now we're gonna jump into the bottom menu here. The first one is the most important and this is your car settings. Most of the options here are gonna be set to auto, but it's good to know what everything does. Exterior lights, your front fogs. I recommend keeping your lights on auto unless you have a specific way that you wanna drive. I have my front fogs turned to off, but feel free to turn them on if need be. If you turn them on and you have auto set, they will auto come on and off as need be. Below that are the adjustments for the mirrors. Now you'll notice to adjust the mirrors, you're gonna use the left scroll wheel. Here's where you can adjust whether you want your mirrors to auto tilt when you go into reverse and also when your car locks, whether your mirrors auto fold. The next is the steering wheel. To control the steering wheel and how high, low, or how close or far it is, you're also gonna use the left scroll wheel. You will need to go into here to also manually fold the mirrors as, 
as and when you need. If you want to enable window lock, you can do so here and you can adjust the brightness of your display, but I recommend setting it to auto as it's pretty intuitive. Now you'll always see on the bottom left here, the glove box access. This is how to open up the glove box. It's right here. So these are the quick controls, what's recommended or what you would need access to the most frequent. Now, as we go into each menu, you're going to see things repeated that were in quick controls, but go into details. Again, here are your headlight features again. Here you'll see options for your dome lights, the lights on the footwell, as well as the lights in the door storage compartments. Those are called ambient lights and whether you want them on or off is all dictated here. Now, if you scroll down, you'll see that you have the option to turn auto high beams on and off. It will, it will automatically detect when you need them on and turn them on and it will automatically detect when there's oncoming traffic and turn them off accordingly. Now the next is the headlights after exit. Basically when you exit your car, your headlights will stay on for a period of time. So if you park outside and you need to light up your pathway, I would recommend turning that on. The last is the steering wheel lights. These are the two arrow indicating lights to the right and left of both scroll wheels on the steering wheel, whether you want them on or off course, I would recommend keeping them on. At night, it's nice to be able to see that. Next is going to be your locks. Now, this is very important if you have kids to lock the windows and enable child locks. This will also indicate what devices you have set up as keys for the car. So as you can see here, I've got four key cards as well as my phone programmed to be keys for the car and thus the car knows to unlock the car went with any of those devices. When we go into the mobile app, I will show you how to program your phone as a key for the car. Next is the display. Obviously, I would recommend that everything here be put on auto. Display mode will automatically change from day to night. The brightness will automatically change as well. If you needed to make the entire screen dark to clean it better, you can enable screen clean mode as well as change your time format. You can also dictate how you want to display your energy, whether you want it to be distance or how much percent. You'll see that it changed up here to 43%. And when I change it to distance, it'll show me actually how many miles I have remaining. The next is how you want your distance displayed, miles or kilometers, your temperature, and your tire pressure, how you want them to be displayed. This is all personal preference. Next is driving. Uh, if you don't like the speed of the car and you want it to feel more like a regular car instead of the instant torque, I would recommend switching this to chill mode. My wife used it in chill mode and it makes her feel a little bit more secure when driving. I myself like it in standard. Next is the steering mode. Whether you like it to be in comfort, standard, or sport, that will adjust how easy it is to turn the steering wheel. Next is regenerative braking. Regenerative braking is a braking that's applied when your foot lets up off the gas automatically. This helps put energy back into the battery. I recommend setting it to standard, but if you feel that that's a little bit too aggressive, you can switch it to low. Those of you who are coming from a regular car may be used to the creep option, and that is where you let your foot up off the brake and your car slowly creeps forward. Well, with creep off, your car goes into a hold mode when the brake is applied, which is essentially like an emergency brake, allowing you to take your foot off the brake and rest it. If you don't like that and you want to have it be more like a regular car, I would enable enabling creep mode. And lastly is slip start. And that's to be used if your car gets stuck in snow or sand or mud. It will allow a little bit more of a slip start when applying the acceleration. Moving into autopilot, if you have enhanced autopilot enabled, these are where you'll find all of your settings to set what you want your cruise follow distance, which also can be done from the right scroll wheel. If you want auto steer to be enabled, if you want navigate on autopilot to be enabled, and these are all beta, so you can turn them on, but keep in mind that they are beta. As well as you've seen the car move automatically without a driver being in the car, that is called summon, which you can do from your phone. This is where you'll enable all of that and customize those features. 
So customizing Navigate on autopilot will tell you, hey, when I change lanes, how do I want it to be? Do I not want it to change lanes? Do I want it to be mild, average, or do I want it to be extremely aggressive, otherwise known, otherwise known as Mad Max? In Summon, you can customize that as well as far as how, how close you want it to get to objects, how tight you want the space to be, and whether you want there to be consistent touch from your device to start and stop Summon. And that's just used for safety. Sp speed limit warning will be displayed on the screen right over here when you're driving. It will show you what the speed limit of the area you're in is. You can set it to chime if you want it to chime and alert you. There's also forward collision warning. Now this does not actually stop your car to a complete stop, but it will apply brakes at the last second to avoid. But the main thing here is to alert you based on the speed you're going and the distance from how far you are from the object that you're going to hit, how early it will alert you so that you can then step in and apply the brakes and adjust accordingly. If you want to stay in the lane and you have a and you notice that you drift a lot, you may want to enable lane departure warning. This is applied by vibrating the steering wheel. So if your steering wheel is vibrating, it's probably because you have that on and you I'd recommend turning it off. Uh, automatic emergency braking is enabled as well as obstacle awareness acceleration. So if in fact, and you can click on the eye here to get more details, if it detects that something is in your way, it will steer around it or move uh, to avoid it. And this is only at low speeds. Moving into navigation. Now navigation, uh, you can set your settings while when you have a navigation in play by hitting the settings feature. Otherwise, this is how else to go into it. You can adjust the voice of your navigation whether you want it to mute, if you don't want it to disturb you from your music, if you want to set her voice lower. You can also have Trip Planner, allow, which automatically builds in stops to superchargers based on your trip as you need it, which I highly recommend doing so that you don't end up running out of battery. Uh, online routing, this is kind of nice that if it detects a route that will save you five minutes, 10 minutes, or 15 minutes, it will automatically reroute you you're going to choose to avoid ferries, avoid tolls, and use HOV lanes and so forth as you see fit. Keep HOV lanes on because having an electric car does have that benefit of using an HOV lane. Moving into safety and security, this is an area that you don't really actually need to use unless you're going away for an extended period of time and you do not want your car having any phantom drain. That is where your battery is still consuming a little bit of power even though you are not driving the car. I would recommend powering off the car. Speed limit mode, this is actually enabled to, and you'll see there it went into night mode. It's currently 445, it's not really dark outside yet, but this is what the night mode of the screen looks like. So you get a, a vision of what both modes look like. Speed limit mode right here, this actually is enabled to I would actually turn this on or off based on if you are giving your car to a shop to work on and you don't want them going out and you know running around your car at 80, 90 miles an hour. Set the speed limit mode low, turn it on, and to turn on and off, it will require you to put in a pin. If you want park assist chimes on or off, that is how you turn them on. They will also appear up here, a little volume indicator that you can turn them off. Right now they're off because I had my baby sleeping in the car the last time. Next is the security alarm. Now the security alarm is basically if the doors are opened when the car is locked. It does not arm the car from glass break. Next is cabin overheat protection. If you're in an area that is extremely hot, this will keep your car automatically cool based on the temperatures that are indicated in the information. One thing I will caveat here is if you have this on, it will automatically come on and off without your input, which could have a negative impact to your battery. And lastly here is allow mobile access. Allow mobile access. This can be turned on or off if you don't want to 
if you want to turn off the access from your phone. And lastly here is service mode. Wiper service mode turned on will pop up your, your wipers and allow you to change the wipers out and clean them. I do not recommend going into adjusting headlights, towing, or factory reset as that is generally for the service centers to utilize. Again, another area to access the owner's manual. And lastly, the glove box. Click that and your glove box opens. And that is the car settings menu. There are a couple ways to close the menu. One is of course clicking the X here. Secondly is actually dragging the menu closed. And lastly, if you actually just move your finger on the menu of the car and swipe down, it will swipe it away. Next on the block is music. And music works in a similar way, but music has three different view modes. Full screen, half screen, minimal, and actually hiding it completely. So let's bring up the full screen so we can look at all the options that are available. The first is radio. This is like your standard radio. You can tune into whatever station you want. If you want to manually type in the station, you can. On the top, it'll indicate whether, the station, whether you want HD stations or not. If you want to move forward or backwards in these stations, if you want to favorite a station, and your music audio options. Now these audio options are saved for all the different types of music in the car. So understand that even though we're on the radio and we're tuning this, it will affect your MP3s, your streaming, and your Bluetooth music as well. Here you'll find tone, the balance in your car, and extra options. Now, just kind of going through these, tone is kind of dependent on your listening style and what you feel sounds good. Adjust accordingly. Balances as well is dependent on your listening style and how you want your music to sound. As, and in the options menu, of course, if you want explicit content, feel free to turn them on. If you want to allow mobile control, because now when you're in the car, if you have someone in the rear seat that you want to give access to control the music, you can do so. And I want to highlight immersive sound. Immersive sound is more of a surround sound and allows the audio to, to sound like it's coming from everywhere instead of coming from specific speakers. So you'll hear sounds coming from parts of the car where there is not a speaker and that's what immersive sound essentially is supposed to emulate. So radio is pretty straightforward. Next is streaming. Now streaming is powered by Slacker. And Slacker is a company that does streaming music and basically it's as it sounds. You've got all the different genres of music that you can listen to and that is included in your LTE mobile access that came with your car. Now wireless access on the car post purchasing now and forward is going to be $100 per year. But if you happen to buy your car uh, previously, uh, prior to this change going into effect, you are locked in for life and have access to streaming music and maps. Now the, stream, now the Slacker streaming music player, this actually gives you access to all types of music, uh, genres and so forth, all commercial free, and is more of an emulation of playing the music that you like. So you can hit search, search a certain song or album or artist, and it will try to play that song that you may have requested as well as anything that sounds like that. You cannot actually pick a certain song and play just that. Now here are the top stations that it will indicate here. As you listen to a song, you can favorite the song, which will get stored under favorites radio. And that will of course play songs like, songs that you like based on what you favorited. There's also DJ series, which changes up uh, depending on the month and so forth. Obviously we're in December, so you'll see a lot of Christmas stuff here as well as, oh, a new Grammy station and then genres. And that's streaming. Phone is exactly what you think of it as. It will show you the phone that's connected. And if you have music on your phone or you choose to use a different service, i.e. Spotify or Pandora or so forth, 
you can actually stream that using Bluetooth straight into the car with the phone option. And lastly is tune in. A lot of people ask about AM radio, a lot of people ask about podcasts, and this is where you'll find that. Here you'll find podcasts, you'll find AM radio stations. If you search local radio, so you can see local to the area stations, there are stations dedicated to sports and so forth. And that is what TuneIn is. Other than that, on the bottom right, you'll find any music. So if you want to search a podcast, a song, an artist, a album, a station, you can do that here and it will search through all of those options available that we just went through. So for example, if I search artists and I search Ed Sheeran, you'll see I don't even have to finish typing. You'll see a lot of different options come up. If I click on the artist here, it will immediately go into playing the artist and a song by the artist. All right, so that's music. The other thing is if you quickly wanted to hide and bring back to the last menu of how you had the music, if you just touch it, it will automatically go into the last menu that you had it on. So if I have it in a, a small menu, I click it to take it away, I click it to bring it right back. If I had it on the full screen menu, I click it to hide it and click it to bring it back. All right, let's go into the what I like to call the drawer, the app drawer. Here you'll have access to the calendar and you can enable calendar access or not and it will pull that directly from your phone. You also have access to, you also have access to the camera. Again, another view of how to get to the camera. Another way to get into charging, which we talked about. You also have an option to get into your call and this will enable your phone menu which gives you access to your recent calls, your contacts, as well as your dial pad. On the top right, you'll find the web browser. Now, the web browser, take it for a grain of salt, is not like your web browser that you'll find on your computer. It works, but don't expect anything and everything to work. Do not expect YouTube to work on this browser. But in a pinch, it can and work on certain things. Of course, the Tesla website works perfectly on this browser. Now, going into the energy consumption, this is actually really nice to see how you've been using your car. Clearly, I am a very conservative driver, uh, but if you are not, you'll see a lot of spikes here showing a, a higher watt per mile average. And then at the end, it'll show you what it's projected as far as your range, uh, about how much you have left. You'll see... I have 132 miles left, but I'm projected at getting 141 if I continue the very conservative driving how I've been driving. On the bottom here, you'll notice you can get a, a shorter range view as well as an instant range as opposed to average range. You can also look at trip. If you wanted to specifically track a certain trip, you can do that there. And that is the energy view. Next, you'll find the instant seat warmers for both the driver and passenger. If you click it once, it'll enable full seat warming. Click it again, it lowers it. Click it again, it lowers it. And click it again, it turns it off. That'll work for both driver and passenger. The next is going to be the ventilation system. To quickly turn the ventilation system on, click the fan on. It will bring up the view. And what I want to highlight is a couple things here. You'll notice down in the bottom right, this is for your rear seat ventilation. You'll notice that it's off. That will auto turn on when weight is sensed on the rear seats. Right now there's no one in the rear seats, so it's off, but you can manually turn it on by just touching there. Recirculating air is right here. Control the fan speed is right here. We're gonna turn it down so it doesn't come in, it doesn't interfere with the audio. To turn on the air conditioner, it's right here. To set your air on auto, it's right here, and that will automatically adjust the air. We're gonna turn that down because I don't, again, I don't want it interfacing with the audio. Now you've got air options to go on your feet, on your face, and to shoot above your face if you don't want it aiming directly at your face. Now let's talk about sending the air at your face. This is actually kind of interesting. You can combine, you can shoot it directly at your face, you can. Swipe it down if you want it to go lower, higher. 
If you want to shoot it around to the sides of your face, you can actually do that as well. And so you've got a whole bunch of options, and that is, and that is different for both the driver and passenger view. Okay. As well as the air, you'll also see the seat warmers. We saw the quick ways to turn on the driver and passenger, but when you click on the seat warmers here, you have the option to turn on the rear seat warmers as well as the driver and passenger and at the same time to quickly turn them all off. And that wraps up the ventilation system of the Model 3. When the ventilation system is hidden, you can quickly adjust the temperature here. You can also turn off sync if you wanna have driver and passenger to have their own temperature. You can turn sync back on, you'll see it bring it back into one. But if you quickly wanted to turn off the ventilation, the air, if you're just like, I like the temperature it's at, I wanna turn it off. If you click and hold, you'll see that little indication right there, that has turned off the air system. Now, coming back to the screen after talking about the ventilation system, we'll go into the defrosters. You've got a front defroster. What's unique about this is you can choose whether you want cold air, touch it again for hot air, or turn it again to turn it off. And the rear defroster is pretty basic. It's a rear defroster with heat. And last but not least is the volume controls. Now you'll notice that you can actually slide it and make it really easy. And the nice thing about this is, as you remember, the left scroll wheel controls your volume, but this is really handy as it's closest to the passenger side seat. So if they wanted to adjust the volume, they could. Now that pretty much covers about 95% of the screen. I'm probably missing one or two things. I did want to recall one more thing that I don't know if I talked about. This line right over here that we talked about earlier that shows when you're driving, it will show green on the left-hand side when you're using regenerative braking, black on the right-hand side when you're actually utilizing the batteries and power from the car to drive. But on occasion, you will see the left indicator right above the name of your car look like a series of dots. That indicates that regenerative braking is limited. And what that usually means is that can happen one of two ways. One, you just charged your car up to 100% or to 90% or whatever your limit is set to, but you just charge it all the way up. And so thus you cannot do regenerative braking. There is no more room to add power back to the battery. Your battery is full. The second option there is when the weather reaches extreme cold climates. In cold climates, it takes some time for the batteries to warm up to be able to accept regenerative braking. And so you will see a series of dots here indicating regenerative braking is limited. Now you know what exactly it means. Okay, so just recently in the middle of filming, there was a software update for the car. Now, one thing to call out is that there will always be software updates and everything will be changing. These videos are mainly to give you a gist of some of the main controls of the car, but keep in mind placement and features of the car are subject to change. Now, as of the end of December, version 48.12 just got released and I did want to just call out a couple new features that were added to the car. Number one being that now when you turn on your air, you do get this option to keep climate on here at the top. Now the keep climate on feature is extremely nice, especially if you're leaving someone in the car or you have a pet in the car to keep the climate running. One thing to call out on keep climate on is that the climate will stay on after you leave the car and it will turn off when the battery reaches 20% thus still giving you 20% to make it home or make it to your next destination or make it to a supercharger. So that was feature number one that was added. And the other features were based in our Easter egg menu. You remember these are kind of the fun features added to the car. Uh, there were three main things added here. One is this whoopee cushion. It is called emissions testing mode. And this is a fun feature that was added and it basically adds a flatulence noise, as you'll hear here, to the car to play either in the front right speaker, the front left speaker, the rear left speaker, the rear right speaker, and so forth. There are a selection of farts to choose from, of course, being very creatively named. There is also a fart on turn signal, which allows you the farts to come on when you hit the turn signal 
or a fart on demand, which allows you to press the left scroll wheel to initiate a fart. Keep in mind that does limit you your ability to play and pause your music. And that's the emission testing mode. Some fun stuff. The next Easter egg to call out is what's called romance mode. Romance mode initiates a fireplace right on your dash as well as turning up the heater at full blast. If you click the screen when the fireplace is running, you'll be presented with some romantic music to enjoy, recline your seats, stare up at the stars with your loved one. Press it again and everything goes off. And that's romance mode. The third feature is in the Atari emulator and that's the addition of the game Pole Position. Pole Position was a old racing game. The cool thing about this game is the ability to play it A with a USB controller or B to use your steering wheel and your brake pedal to play. You'll notice that it is a Tesla Model 3 and I'm pressing the brake now and the car is starting to go. I'm using my steering wheel to steer the car. Keep in mind it's very sensitive so to you just need to move the steering wheel a little bit to steer and that's how you die. And that's pole position. And the last feature I want to call out is under safety and security and that's called pin to drive. Uh, enabling pin to drive will require a pin every time you turn on the car and will limit the ability to drive the car by anyone. As opposed to what was available before which was the limiting of speed. Keeping the car under a certain speed, this will completely block anyone who gets into your car the ability to drive without knowing your four digit pin. And those are the new features that were added in as of 48.12.